And we uh, we are back, and as promised, in our studio live is uh, Superintendent of Lubbock Public Schools, Lubbock ISD, Dr. Kathy Rollo. Good morning, Dr. Rollo. Good morning. Thank you for having me this morning. Well, we're always glad to have you, and uh, we uh, you're scheduled every month, and we uh, can hardly wait until you come <laughs> out and impart some information about what's going on in our school system. You know, we have lots of moms and dads that listen to this program, and uh, they certainly uh, do have a lot of interest in that particular. Let's get right to it. The um, uh, You guys are considering, uh, one of the things you're considering is on your agenda, of course, is school safety. Yes, absolutely. That's always first and foremost on our, on our minds. And a year and a half ago, I was a new superintendent in Lubbock, and we had some community meetings. And from those community meetings where we got feedback on, on what we had in place and what parents and community members wanted to see in place with regard to safety and security, um, we really moved forward with our bond election, which included a lot of items addressing safety and security. We also put a lot of behavioral things in place, such as our standard response protocol. Um, we increased our police force. And so we want to go back again and have community meetings again and again, share what we have in place now, because we have a lot more in place now a year and a half later than we did then, but then also get some feedback on some things that the community would like to see moving forward. Well, and, and one of the things I know, and I, I wanted to ask you where we are on that. I know that we, we've talked about it uh, with every one of your visits in the past, I suppose, about uh, the things that you're implementing at the schools. Yes. And where are we there? I know you're, bring us up to speed. You're putting uh like um, sensors that you have to clear to get into schools now, right? And yes, and we actually have those right now. In all the schools? In all of our schools, but we are creating actually secure vestibule entrances in all of our campuses so that visitors have to be channeled through um, the main office before they have access to the rest of the building. So that's requiring quite a bit of remodeling. Mm. That work has started. It has begun. Um, but we have – it'll take us several years to complete all of that. Um, that it also includes some additional cameras, lighting, fencing, um, secure access points where, where employees can scan their badges to get in. Those are already in our buildings, but we're putting more of those in our buildings so that students can um, – and staff can get into a building faster if they need to rather than having to go around the building to where one of those access points are. So that work has begun. Um, we've trained everyone on our new standard response protocol, and that is in full swing. Our, our students and staff are all very familiar with that, as well as first responders in the community as well. And then we also have some new crisis communication plans that we've put into place. So there are quite a few things in place now that we did not have in place um, in a solid way a year and a half ago. But there are still more things to consider. Yeah, so. and uh, you said that y'all were going to have a meeting? We actually have several meetings scheduled. We have one a month, and our first one is actually tonight at Estacado High School at 6.30 in the cafeteria. Is that right, cafeteria and Jeff? We're meeting in the cafeteria, and we'll have one meeting in each feeder pattern. Um, we are sending a call out to all of our families in that feeder pattern, but anybody's welcome to come to any of the meetings. Um, but the first one is tonight in Estacado feeder pattern at Estacado High School at 630 in the auditorium. I mean, sorry, cafeteria. And it's, it's all about uh, safety and security. Yes, we're going to share what we have in place and then, and then break out into small groups and get feedback on what community members would like to see in place. So this would be a particularly Particular interest to anyone who has a student at, in ISD. Absolutely, ISD. absolutely. Six thirty at Estacado tonight, and even just people from the community that are interested in what mm -hmm. we're doing around safety well, and security. Well, one of the things you're doing is, uh, and and Matt knows a lot more about this. I think he's up more up to speed on the two options about the Marshall and the Guardian programs. Yeah, well, just uh, potentially having teachers that uh, would have access to a weapon under a certain circumstances. Um, I mean, is, is, is I mean, you know, right now y'all are just discussing that and that this would be the place if, if you have an opinion or want to discuss that and you have a child, this would be the place to go discuss Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, there are two different options that are available to schools if they want to consider that state. route. From the state. Um, one Approved, is, pre-approved. Yes, yes. One's the school marshal program and one's the school guardian program. And there are differences around where the gun is stored, the training required. Um, one is a little more of a defensive model and one's a little more offensive model. Um, but we want to just talk about those two options, get feedback from the community to see if that's something that we even 
want to consider. We actually have a state-required safety committee that meets um, on a quarterly basis, and that committee is made up of parents, staff members, first responders from our community, um, and so we will take this feedback to that committee, which would make a recommendation to our board of trustees. So is the school board going to be involved in these, uh, these meetings at all? So yes, actually, yes. We have two school board members who are actually on that safety committee. Mm -hmm. Um, our school board president, Zach Brady is on that committee as well as school board member, um, Ben Webb. Um, so yes. And and then all school board members are welcome to come to these meetings. They are posted regular open meetings. Well, one of the, the biggest issues of course is, um, uh, the background uh, in in renaming uh, Smiley Wilson Middle School uh, yeah. or reimaging uh, Smiley Wilson Middle School. I know when that story came out, what a week or ten days ago, there was a lot of feedback. We talked about it on the show. Yes. So uh, bring us up to speed with what's going on there. So Smiley Wilson Middle School. Um, has been an F campus for the last two years, but we took their old data since 2013 and plugged it into our new A through F accountability model. And in doing so, we discovered that they actually, if that model had been in place since 2013, they would have been a C and then a D for two years and then an F for four years. And so the school academically has been not heading in the right direction. Um, We have put some things into place to try to help mitigate that and to help improve the school, but that just wasn't doing what we needed to fast enough. And so um, we made the decision to move forward with actually rezoning the neighborhood of Smiley Wilson into Irons and McKenzie Middle Schools. Both of those schools have capacity to serve more students, and so we're not overcrowding the schools by doing this. Um, But then we want to reimagine Smiley Wilson and use that facility with a new name as a true STEAM magnet school. Um, magnet means that there's no, there will be no attendance boundary, um, so any students are welcome to apply to be a part of this new STEAM Academy. We'll start with sixth and seventh graders and then add eighth graders the second year. Um, but truly, um, project-based learning around science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. Mm-hmm. Very good. So oh, okay, let's, well, let's go ahead and take a break and we'll come back, Matt, and get to your question at uh, 7.15. Uh, here on KFYL Mornings with Matt and Dave and talking with uh, Lubbock School Superintendent Dr. Kathy Rollo. After this. And we're back here on KFYL Mornings with Dave and Matt and in the studio this morning, Dr. Kathy Rollo, Superintendent of Lubbock ISD. Um, we were talking about the Smiley Wilson kind of change. How has the, um, I guess, the feedback on that been? I mean, we've been getting a little mixed feedback. Some people are very happy about it. And some people are a little worried that maybe um, we're going to take more uh, of the top students from some schools, put them in Smiley Wilson, and then actually take down other schools by putting some of the lower performing students into those. Well, the the new STEAM Academy, the new Magnet School, which we haven't named yet but hope mm-hmm. too soon, um, is actually going to be open enrollment. So students do not have to meet criteria to get into this program. Any student who wants to apply, it will be a true lottery system. We are going to give priority to students within the Coronado feeder pattern just because we want to make sure we're balancing out numbers in those schools. Mm -hmm. But as far as it being top students, any student is welcome to be a part of this program. So, Well, a question. This this type of uh, educational program, different than, it's different than the regular classrooms. Would you say that this is more aimed at that student who's a visual learner? I would actually say it's a student who's more of a kinesthetic learner. So a student who learns <laughs> in very hands-on told, ways. You hadn't told me anything so yet. So when I think about the type of student that would thrive in this environment, I think of my middle son. He was a Lego kid. He learned by by actually doing things with his hands. Um, he loves to actually get his hands dirty, roll up his sleeves, take things apart, put things back together in different ways. Um, But as far as textbook and lecture type of learning, that was not what he thrived on. So um, my middle son would have benefited from this Don't you call that a visual learner? Someone that learns visually rather than... Kinesthetic is learning with your hands, learning by doing. Yeah. Through movement. Well, that's the way my son was. Yeah. Yeah, He he could walk into a new room and he went, what's this? What's that? Does it come apart? (laughs) That's that's the way he was. So a lot of kids who um, 
are maybe not as successful in a traditional environment, this may be a perfect avenue for them. Well, how do you find out? If you're a parent, how do you determine whether you know. maybe your kid... <laughs> Having been a parent of one of these students, I knew because yeah. school was a struggle for him. Um, but he loved learning in this manner. So we were always seeking out extracurricular kinds of things to help him with that. But this is actually a school environment set up for this type of learning. Was was there ever any talk about uh, kind of like Talkington is all females doing mm-hmm. an all-male school? You know, that has been tossed out there. There are not as many models around the country for that. There are models of this steam academy type environment. And so, you know, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. So we know that there are very successful STEAM type learning magnet schools throughout the state and nation, as well as School for Young Women Leaders. That was already an established network. Um, There really is not a network that we have found for schools for all boys. So were there a lot of things looked at or was this something that y'all just uh, zoned in on? Well, this was really something that came to the bubble to the top Mm -hmm. as something that is unique for West Texas. There's nothing like this in our area. And so we we really thought this would be another great option for families and students um, within our own district. So, so are the teachers from Smiley Wilson going to move to the other middle schools? So every teacher in good standing at Smiley Wilson, every staff member will actually have a home in Lubbock ISD, whether it's at Irons, McKenzie, or they can apply to be a part of the new magnet school um, if they're interested. But it is a different type of learning, a different type of teacher planning. And so it's it's going to have to be something that they believe in and buy into and want to be a part of. Hey, j- just, a, just a question of a side, because I've always wondered this. It may or may not fit with this, but has the school ever considered uh, school uniforms? Is that something that's just not possible in, in a public school situation? Actually, um, Smiley Wilson, as well as several of our schools in the district have, we don't call it uniforms, we call it standardized dress. So they wear a, a, t- a certain color top, certain color pants or skirts or shorts. Yeah, um, it, so it just seems to me like that would be, because there's so much of this rich kid, poor kid yeah, thing in all, I mean, in all schools. And it just seems like this would... Uh, this would even things out yeah. a bit. A lot of our schools have standardized dress, and that's a, completely up to the campus to decide if they want to Does do that. Does it work? Uh, Does it help? I would say in some instances, as far as whether or not we see increases in student outcomes, we didn't see that at Smiley Wilson, and they've had standardized, standardized dress for several years. I will say that within the Estacado feeder pattern, um, Dunbar and the elementary schools that feed into Dunbar all have standardized dress, and we've seen great improvement in those schools. So whether or not we can tie it to student outcomes, I don't know that we've been able to see that clearly, but as far as... Um, Helping all students feel accepted and, and wanted and like they're not standing out, right. I think that that is a positive cultural factor. Okay, so we're down to about two minutes, and you were talking about something to do with the fire department that you wanted to discuss. Yeah, so we, so we're just, I want to give a huge shout out to our Lubbock area firefighters. Um, their association has donated coats to every single student at two of our elementary schools, at Bayless and at Roberts Elementaries. And we are just extremely grateful. Every single child will get to walk home today from Bayless with a new coat. And I believe it's next week at Roberts with a new coat. So we just want to say thank you for your support. And that's just a perfect example of how the community comes together to help support our our youngest Our our firefighters have been collecting these coats? Yes. Oh, that's great. Isn't that awesome? We are just extremely grateful. Do you know the name of that program uh, if somebody wanted to donate a code or something to that program <laughs> sorry I'm, I know I'm it's the Lubbock difficult. Firefighters Association well I'll bet you they could take it to any firehouse yeah, I, I, I would go out on a limb and say that that's probably just take a take the coats mm-hmm. together up we did this the other day you know at, at church we gave away the coats Jeff and went in there and gathered up a whole bunch of coats that uh, we no longer wear and took them to church and give them we give them to the homeless but that's a great great deal Well, we are extremely grateful, and so thank you to our Lubbock area firefighters.